hey hey y'all and welcome so glad you decided to click on this video and join me for a little while today i'm tiffany this is our small town life and today i have a day in the life of a homemaker for you you're getting a little preview here of what you're going to see in today's video some laundry motivation what's for dinner taking care of the chickens we're also going to do some unboxing one of those being a new comforter for my bed and we're going to do some organization organizing some of these baby essentials last week in a video i mentioned that i wanted to start maybe once a week sharing with y'all a little of my background as a homemaker stories about when i walk through different seasons of homemaking and just let you get to know me a little bit better so today's video is going to be the first one of those i don't know if i'm going to share these stories in chronological order or if I'm just going to share what seems relevant and what I'm you know, feeling led to share. Uh, that's where I'm leaning towards. But today we are going to take it all the way back to some of my earliest days as a homemaker. I get a lot of questions about how Justin and I met and um, how long we've been together. And we're going to talk about that more today. Let me go ahead and tell you all, I'm unboxing some things right now. Justin ordered him and the oldest two boys some new Liberty overalls. We got old fashioned day coming up at church and so he got them some new overalls they are so stinking cute so nice and then you're also going to see me unboxing a new comforter for my bed i had mentioned a while back that i was looking to try to find something that i liked and i found this one on sale at belk and so i'm going to go ahead and put it on my bed today make sure i like the way that it looks and then i'm going to get everything washed up i do still need to get some king size pillows you'll notice that but we are going to put it on the bed in today's video and see what it looks like so how did justin and i meet and how long have we been together we were high school sweethearts better yet i was in middle school when we first became boyfriend and girlfriend i was not quite old enough to date yet but he could come over to the house and he could go to church with us i was right around the same age that audrey is now and sometimes that's really strange for me to think about but we dated throughout high school. Justin is a couple of years older than me, so he graduated. And then a couple of years later, it was my senior year. And around Christmas time, he asked me to marry him. And I said yes. And then I graduated. A few weeks later, we got married. So all together, Justin and I have been together for about 20 years. A lot of people will laugh at and discount young relationships, but I never do that. Because I know that, you know, we used to be this young love, these high school sweethearts. And then we became husband and wife and, and mother and father. And I know what that became. And I've seen it in other people and in their relationships around me. And so I never discount that. I never laugh off those relationships like I think a lot of people tend to do. And I also, because of that, want to stress to my children the importance of respecting those relationships and not going into that kind of relationship just for the sake of having a boyfriend or just for the sake of having a girlfriend but to date with intention i'm not saying that my children have to marry the first person they ever date um, but i don't think that they should date someone if it's not a person they could see themselves, you know potentially marrying one day i just think that they should date with a purpose because those relationships can be very special and i just think that dating with a purpose makes more sense different families approach that different ways that's just the way we approach it sometimes people ask what my parents thought about us getting married so young or young by today's standards and you know i can't speak for them but i can give you my perspective on it and how it seemed from my viewpoint I'm not going to say that my parents were not hesitant. I can remember some very specific times where they you know, were asking me if I was sure this is what I wanted and you know, just really trying to make me think about the decisions that I was making. But they also knew where Justin and I stood, how long we had been together, how we felt about each other, and they were very supportive. And y'all, what you just saw was the power went off. They were working on some things up the road, so the power went off for a little while. 
But what I was saying is I had some really great examples in my parents and in my grandparents in the fact that they allowed Justin and I to step out on our own and start our own life, but they were still there in appropriate ways when we needed them. They had a very good balance of letting us go off on our own and then still helping when we needed them. My mama used to always just call Justin her grandson. Um, she never said Tiffany's husband or my grandson-in-law. He was her grandson, and that that is just really special to me, and that's exactly how they always treated him and the way they loved on us in our marriage. Here recently, I did a video that was a tour of our first home together when we lived in Auburn. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But it was a tour of our single wide mobile home, a tour in photos. I'll link that in case you haven't seen it. But when I was putting that video together, I was just overflowing with gratitude as I looked at those pictures and I was seeing all of these things that people had gifted us and things they had given us to help us get started in our first home, furniture and dishes and bedroom furniture, food. I was seeing all of these things and I was just brought back to this place of complete gratitude and seeing the physical side of the love that they poured out to us, physically seeing all of those things that they gifted to us and ways that they helped us get started in our marriage. And then not only that, but all the prayers that I know were prayed over us and all the love that these people had for us. They did not have to be supportive. They could have said, well, this is what you want. You go and you do it and you figure it out. But, and they let us do that to a certain extent, but they were there when we needed them. And that's what I want to be for my children. I have people that were beautiful examples of that in my life. And looking back on it, I see it more than ever. So Justin and I got married uh, we got married in June, like I said, and then we did not move to Auburn until a few weeks later. We had to get some things situated with living arrangements and getting started into school. And so we lived with my parents for a few weeks and my parents helped us you know, find a place and get into a place in Auburn. And we got our two bedroom, one bathroom, little single wide mobile home. And y'all, that, that home was packed full of love. Love with me and Justin, love from our family, um, just so much love and memories packed into that little home. I did not know what I was doing and I was having to learn. Again, I had great examples to watch growing up and I'm so blessed because of that and thankful for it. But when you step out and you're having to figure it out on your own, I want to encourage young homemakers to know that yeah, even if, even though you see other people doing it, even though you watch me doing it or you have other people in your life that are great examples, there comes a time where you just have to figure it out on your own. And what works for one person may not work for you and you just have to learn your family and your home and what works for you. I do wish that I had spent more time in those early days studying about and learning about what God intended for the homemaker instead of just trying to <laughs> figure it out on my own uh, because you do have to do that in a certain extent but figuring it out on your own should include biblical knowledge and studying what the Bible tells you a homemaker looks like and I didn't really know to do that so let me encourage young homemakers that while you are in that time of figuring it out make sure you're studying and hearing what God has to say about your duties as a homemaker. After we had been in Auburn for about a year, we started to have a change of heart on our career path. Justin, the main reason why we went to Auburn was because Justin wanted to be a vet and I was majoring in landscape design and we started to have a change of heart. I really think that at that time, God was starting to work in me about being a wife and being a mother. He was starting to give me those desires, but I had drilled in my mind so much that I had to go to college that was the only thing that I could think about that was I mean that's what I had to do it's what I was supposed to do it's what I'd always been told to do and that's at no fault to my parents 
Um, I'm in a place now, like I said, with Audrey, who, you know, in just a few years, she'll be graduating and moving on to that next stage of life. And I can, you know, tell that I want what's best for her. She's so smart and I want her to do what's best. So I can, I can understand where that comes from, but what's best for her may not necessarily be what the human nature side of me <laughs> thinks it is. And so I always want to be very intentional about making sure she knows that I want her to pray about and seek out what God has in store for her, uh, for all of my children. But I just say Audrey, because I know she's getting closer to that age and it's got me thinking about it. But you know, the schools, the, they, I mean, that was all that they put in front of us was you go to college. And so that's all I could think about. But I can tell now looking back that God was starting to put the desire on my heart of being a wife and being a mother and letting that be my main focus and not necessarily having to have a college education or a career outside of the home. Now, I did end up finishing college. So Justin and I moved back home. We moved back in with my parents while we um, sorted out all the things to get into a home of our own. It took a little while because we had to change jobs, so we couldn't necessarily get a mortgage. So we ended up renting an apartment for a little while and then buying our first home. But we stayed with my parents for a while while we got all of that situated. And I went to a community college close to home. And Justin started at a university that was close to home, but he could also do a lot of things online. He did have to take a little bit of time off from school. And then once I graduated from the community college, we both attended this university and we actually ended up graduating with our bachelor degrees together, which is really special. Um, and I, I am very proud of that. We were married. By the time we graduated, we had two children. It took us a little longer, but we did it. And I'm not, I'm not saying that a college education is a bad thing. Not at all. I just want to make sure that people understand that there are other options and that we should always pray about the path that God has for us. And for some people, that may be what it looks like. And for some people, it may not. I am very proud, though, that Justin and I both graduated. It was it was special that we got to graduate together with our bachelor's degrees and that, you know, our children were able to be a part of it. Easton was still really little. I don't think he came to graduation, but I know Audrey did. And that's just really, really special. But it was hard. It was very hard. And I think that's why I am so proud of it and proud of the fact that I did go ahead and finish college. Because it took a lot of perseverance for me and for Justin. And so I do think that that is something that we should be proud of. And I don't necessarily think that having a college education was a waste for me. Even though I am staying at home now. I do still use a lot of those things. So I ended up majoring in management and marketing. And I use a lot of that in what I do now. Sharing on social media. But... Um, I don't necessarily think it was a waste because it was a time in my life where I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about how hard I can work and, you know, if I persevere, I can do these things. Um, I spent a lot of time praying and asking God to help me when it was hard and he did. And I learned a lot through that. But I definitely think that all along God was preparing my heart to focus on the home. I mentioned that by the time we graduated college... Uh, we had Audrey and Easton in that time. So before Audrey was born, we we had gotten pregnant. This was right after we moved back from Auburn. And we lost that baby. And then we had Audrey. Uh, we moved into our apartment. Then we ended up buying our home. And then when Audrey was about a year old, we decided to start trying for another baby. And we ended up having three losses between Audrey and Easton. And so all of this happened in the early years of our marriage, happened while we were in college, happened while we were trying to start careers, um, happened while we were trying to you know, get settled in our new home. There was a lot of life changes going on. And that was one of those times where when you walk through those things, you can either choose to push away from each other or you can choose to pull together 
And for the most part, through those experiences, Justin and I really did come closer to each other and were very supportive of each other. But after we moved through that season and Easton was born, I think um, we had had, I mean, we had gone through a lot. There was a lot of life changes that had happened. And we were also in a place at this point where Justin was working out of town and I was working about 45 minutes to an hour away from home. And when I say Justin was working out of town, I meant he had to go and be gone all week and then would just come home on the weekends. And then I was working a full-time job about 45 minutes to an hour away from home, plus trying to take care of all of the things at home. A lot of things at home were being impacted negatively by the way our career focus was going and that added stress to our relationship. I didn't necessarily, it was, that wasn't sinking into my mind at the time. And I think I'm going to share this in a separate video, but just to briefly touch on it, it was so much for me to try to handle not having Justin there, having two small children that I had to get somewhere. And then I was going to work and then I was picking up kids and I was coming home and I was trying to do all the things and I was letting things, um, I was letting some things slack in areas where it was my duty to take care of them. But by the same token, I was so stretched thin that it was impossible for me to do everything. Again, I just, I needed to reprioritize. And I think that that's where I'm going to pick up in the next video is sharing with you more about that time in our life and what that looked like for me, because that was one of my hardest times as a young mother having a career outside of the home and not prioritizing the right way and the stress that it caused to my marriage to my mental health to my family I'm not saying that you can't do those things I absolutely you know I feel like I handled them as well as I could at the time with what I knew and the approach that I felt like I needed to take but looking back on it there's things that I definitely could have done differently and I want to share those with y'all and share my heart on that time in my life with you all as well. But today, just wanted to focus on letting you hear about how Justin and I met in some of those very earliest days in our marriage as we went to college and you know moved into our first home and talked about how our family supported us and what that looked like for us and you know some things that I learned through that season of life. And next week, we'll pick up with me sharing my heart on probably one of the hardest seasons of my life as a homemaker and what I have taken from that, what that looked like for me and what I have taken from that and apply to my life still to this day. And I really hope that through these videos and through me just kind of opening up and letting you peek into the window of my life and hear about some of these stories, I really hope that I encourage you, no matter where you are at, no matter what season you're in, no matter what homemaking looks like for you, I hope that just through hearing my story and my experiences that you're able to get something from it. I feel like God is telling me, just, just share your story and people will get what they need from it. So I'm, I'm trusting that God's going to take these stories and these experiences in my life and do something in the life of others through them. All right, I hear a baby calling me. Perfect timing. Thank you for joining me today. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.